Starship's second flight on November 18th took Elon Musk and his space company, SpaceX, one step closer to Mars. Although 100% of the original plan could not be achieved, at least the vehicle completed the hot staging separation as Elon expected, and Ship 25 was very close to orbital speed. This is considered so much better than its predecessor, Ship 24 and Booster 7. That success fired Bill Nelson up so much that he quickly congratulated the SpaceX team after the test and did not forget to emphasize the long-term cooperation between NASA and SpaceX to bring humanity back to the moon and Mars, and more. Indeed, more than anyone else, NASA scientists who have devoted their lives to the rocket industry are the ones who best realize the true meaning of this flight for Starship's long-term development. What SpaceX Starship just did totally shock NASA scientists. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. First of all, to fully understand why scientists at an important space agency like NASA were so impressed with the Starship launch on Saturday morning. Let's deep dive into what SpaceX actually accomplished this time from a rocket expert's perspective. Referring to the recent event, space enthusiasts never forget the evolution of the ground system infrastructure. OLM's damage in April was a major problem helping to push the company into trouble over government regulations for months. Thus, it's safe to say that SpaceX got an expensive lesson about the importance of the flame diverter system and the company should not mess with the crazy power of the Starship. After that, the water deluge system, including a steel plate below the OLM, was installed quickly and the team even carefully spent a lot of time researching, upgrading, and testing this new system. Till the end, all efforts are rewarded. The system works very well, OLM is absolutely protected, and according to the FAA, no injuries or public property damage have been reported. That means that in the future, Starship flights might take place more frequently without being postponed by regulators like last time. Additionally, the rocket itself was also revamped rapidly. During Saturday's launch, all 33 Raptor engines completed a full duration burn during ascent for the first time. As for the upper stage of Starship, although it did not complete the expected journey, at least six engines successfully launched it into space. This test marks the first time the Raptor vacuum has ignited in the sky. Data from the vacuum's operation will be useful in completing the Starship lunar lander serving NASA's Artemis III mission scheduled for late 2025. Of course, SpaceX would not have that data if the spacecraft could not escape from the booster and fly by itself. At this point, let's give the hot staging Techniki credit for its smooth performance. Elon Musk and his team focused a lot on this upgrade. They not only researched and redesigned it so that it can adapt to Starship. Even when Starship was fully stacked on the launch pad, they didn't hesitate to de-stack them as a small error on the hot staging ring was discovered. Everything was done towards a happy ending. Booster engine cut off. Stage separation. Boost bank start up. You're here in the turn. The first ever successful hot stage for SpaceX is Starship. Incredible views of our super heavy booster. The success of the hot staging promises to increase Starship's future payload capacity by 10%, thus contributing to further lowering the vehicle's cost per launch. That's exactly what NASA scientists always dreamed of for their SLS vehicle. On November 16, 2022, NASA had a huge success when its space launch system rocket launched for the first time within the framework of Artemis 1. However, this success is actually based on reusing old technology that was proven to work very well in the last century. According to it, SLS used a core stage, side-mounted boosters, and an upper stage known as the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, or ICPS. 
ICPS is a very lightly modified version of a Delta rocket upper stage that has been serving NASA's missions for a quarter of a century. As you know, the most challenging aspect of almost any launch vehicle is its engines. No problem. The SLS rocket would use engines left over from the Space Shuttle program. Its side-mounted boosters would be slightly larger versions of those that powered the shuttle for three decades. The newest part of the vehicle would be its large core stage, housing liquid hydrogen and oxygen fuel tanks to feed the rocket's four main engines. But even this component was derivative. The core stage's 8.4-meter diameter was identical to the space shuttle's external tank, which carried the same propellants for the shuttle's main engines. Of course, to put this super-heavy rocket into orbit, it took NASA a decade to develop and cost the government tens of billions of dollars in taxes. Almost exactly a year later, the world witnessed a similar success. Like SLS's core stage, the Super Heavy booster also launched successfully. What's even more interesting is that it only took SpaceX four years to turn a simple water tower, Starhopper, into the giant full rocket starship it is today and it only took a few months to turn this flying learner from beginner to intermediate level instead of a decade like NASA. By applying advanced technology, the company can maintain Starship production costs at between one-tenth and one-hundredth the cost of NASA's SLS rocket, or even lower. So imagine that if, at that time, instead of the ship 25, SpaceX placed the ICPs and the hardware of the Orion spacecraft on the Super Heavy, the Starship could have reached the moon on Saturday. To be honest, it's not the first time Elon Musk fired the aerospace industry up. For a long time, his company SpaceX has acted as a game-changer in rocketry, gradually changing the traditional bias of the private company's ability. Back in 2010, the SLS was hailed as the world's largest and most powerful rocket in addition to being extremely cheap and quick to build thanks to extensive use of existing components such as engines and boosters from the Space Shuttle program. Meanwhile, the Starship was simply a concept, as was the Falcon Heavy. Elon Musk's ambition for a heavy orbital vehicle to compete with the nation's rocket agency was once derided as science fiction. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden even uttered that, let's be very honest, we don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. SLS is real. However, later, Charlie himself had to change his mind because in 2018, SpaceX defeated SLS, the pride of NASA with the first demonstration flight of the Falcon Heavy. Meanwhile, it's not until four years later that SLS can take off. This success paved the way for the long-term collaboration between SpaceX and NASA under the significant projects of the space agency later. Mr. Bolden, in that context, also assumed that SLS will go away. It could go away during a Biden administration or a next Trump administration because at some point, commercial entities are going to catch up. They are really going to build a heavy lift launch vehicle, sort of like SLS, that they will be able to fly for a much cheaper price than NASA can do SLS. That's just the way it works. Things have changed so far, and although Starship is still considered a failure or unreliable by some, it is at least highly estimated by experts like NASA scientists, as well as the majority of enthusiasts. They believe that the evolution of Starship will never stop and with each test, Elon Musk's vehicle will break a new boundary, meaning the distance between Earth and Mars will become shorter and shorter. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.